We thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray, help us, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth. And God, I pray that you give us clarity of thought. And God, help us to, uh, Lord, recall the things that we've studied. And Lord, I pray that as we have come here today, God, to hear from heaven, God, that you wouldn't disappoint us. And Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, we'll leave here, God, uh, encouraged in the word of God and helped, Lord, and in, in, uh, with a desire to continue on and go on for thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 24, Christ is talking, speaking to his disciples, and they have some questions uh, concerning his return. And Christ talked to them as, as, as uh, his second coming and the, and the kingdom. And he says these words, and we'll begin reading with verse number one. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be overthrown. He's talking about the temple that they're looking at. And when we were in Israel, this very temple they spoke about, uh, some of the uh, partial of that building was still there and there was not one stone on the other. Bible fulfilled right before your eyes. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of the coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, so Jesus here begins to give them some answers to their questions. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see uh, that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and, and shall kill you, that, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now Jesus is talking here. The gospel he's talking about is the, is the, the gospel of the kingdom which will be preached uh, in the, in the uh, first part of the tribulation. And before some of these things even come to pass, the church will be gone, will not be here. But I want you to know that anyone with any, uh, you know, any sense at all can look around and see that our world is in terrible shape. And I'm not up here to preach to you about the, the bad shape our world is in. But you look around and it, it all, it's all included in the Word of God. We're in a mess, friends. We're in a mess. And it'd be very discouraging to me to look around if I didn't know the Lord. I'd be very discouraged. I've got to where I don't even listen to the news much anymore because, uh, you know, there's nothing on there positive ever, hardly. And the best place I can find some positive reinforcement for my life here on this earth is the Word of God. And I depend more and more upon the Word of God to get me through my every day. Now, do I want to be informed about what's going on? Sure I do. But you turn on the news, whatever channel, it's the same thing over and over and over again. What we're doing, what we're not doing, how we need to do it. Well, I'll tell you something, friend. The only one that's got anything in control is God. He's got it in control. So we see here as Jesus is, is uh, giving us some, some reasons and some things that are going to have to come to pass before he comes, they're here. There's nothing to prevent Christ from coming at any moment. Not one thing. There's nothing, no prophecy has to be fulfilled. Nothing has to be done. Jesus could come while I'm preaching this message, and I say, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. 
Now, we as believers, we think that and we say that, but we forget the millions that are lost and going to hell. And if Jesus comes back right now, there's people in your life that's going to spend eternity in hell right now that you can think of. So that ought to really interest us in trying to get them to God before Jesus comes back. Because after he comes in the rapture, friend, it's too late for those that have heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we read over in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse, verse number 1. A very familiar scripture that I've read often. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. This know also that in the last days perilous, perilous times shall come. Then it gives a list of things that are considered to be going on during perilous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, innocent, in, in, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now you read those scriptures and it, it will come to your mind, it will come to your memory, those things that you see in the world today, every one of them is very prevalent in the world today. And listen, my friend, the last days are perilous times. We are living in those last days. Now I want to give you these relatively quickly and it's 11.45 give me till 10 minutes after and we should be through but if not amen we'll get through when the Lord says 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 through 5 tells us that perilous times shall come so we know that that's, that's right on us that's disobedient to parents unthankful unholy covetous boasters proud blasphemers the lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God you look around it's all around you you don't hear God called out upon much anymore. But, oh, my friend, we're living in, in perilous times. These are the last days. Look around at society and take these verses with you when you go next week and look around and you'll see every one of them. We're also, number one, we're living in perilous times. Number two, we're living in a day of false Christs and false prophets. Many rise up today and say that they are supreme. And I'll go to one in particular, the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ, which means that he believes that he's the substitute for Christ here on this earth. And I'm telling you, that's a bunch of, that's a bunch of nonsense. Jesus Christ is the one that is for us today here. Amen. He is my comforter. He is the one that when he went away, he left the Holy Spirit of God to be my comforter in his stead. And to me, to put, for one man to put himself in that position is a blasphemer. You say, now, preacher, that's a Christian religion. I don't see it. I don't see that at all. I, I love the Catholic folks. And those that are, are there by, you know, because they're confused and because they don't know the truth, I pray for them and pray that God would help them. But, friend, they don't represent the Christ that I know. Amen. So many are out in the world. And look what an influence they're having all over the world. Many, my friend, today are deceived by a false prophet, a false Christ, a false religion. They lead masses of people astray, away from the, the things of God, away from the truth of the Scripture, to believe only the things that they tell them and not what God says in His Word. Anyone can read the Word of God and know that Jesus is the Son of God and that He is preeminent in this world today. Friend, when I go to God, I go to God. When I go to Him, I go through my advocate. The Lord Jesus Christ, the person of the Holy Spirit, takes me before the throne of God. Amen. And, and He comes between me and God and He makes intercession for me. I don't need to talk to a man to do that. I talk to God. I'm not about going to a phone booth and looking through a screen door and telling somebody my sins. Amen? I go to God and I confess my sins before Him and He forgives me of sin. 
Oh, my friend, today there's a lot of falsity. There's a lot of, a lot of falsehood in that religion. And we as believers need to stay true to the principles of the Word of God and the standards of the Word of God and whatever it says, amen, we follow that and not man. And I'm telling you today, if I fall for some reason, if I fall from, you know, from, from the ministry or whatever, something goes wrong with me today, you don't look at me, you look to God. Every person alive on planet Earth today is subject to failure. Every preacher, religious leader, or whatever in this world today, there's nobody perfect and everybody is subject to failure. Even those that think they're beyond that, they're subject to fail. You see them in the world, they're in the world. They're false prophets, they're false Christ, and they're leading the masses astray. Also in this line of false prophets and false Christ and false preachers and false teachers that we see, you beware of that crowd, and I've said this a lot lately, but I believe it needs to be said, and I believe you need to be aware of it. Beware of that crowd that preaches a feel-good-about-yourself message. Now, if I had to rely on that, that may not be pulling my own self up every day and try to feel good about myself. There is nothing good about me. All that I can feel good about is the Lord Jesus. And so for those out there that preach a feel good about themselves ministry and those that would link up with the false religions of this world, I'm going to tell you, that's a sign that Jesus is coming soon. That's a sign that he's coming because men will be lulled and women will be lulled. Children will be lulled to sleep Believe in a false doctrine or a false teaching concerning the things of God and the things of this world. Listen, if you feel pretty good about yourself, you don't need much, do you? If you feel pretty good about yourself, you don't need, you're not in need of God. But I'm telling you, friend, you can make a lost man feel good about himself, but when it comes down to what's on the inside, only the, only the God of heaven, the Holy Spirit of God, can make that man feel good about himself when he accepts Jesus as his Savior. It bothers me about the masses of people that will flock to the do-gooders and the, the uh, health and wealth preachers of the world, and they'll flock to them, and they'll, they'll, many of them will die and go to hell because of a false sense of security. The Bible still says you must be born again. I listen to some of these fellows. I know what I'm talking about. I listen to some of these fellows. And they'll stand up there and, and, and speak, and I'm not going to call it preaching, but they'll speak for an hour, 45 minutes, and never once mention the name of Christ. I'm telling you, friend, that's false. So you beware of who you listen to. And if you listen to someone that wants to join and link all religions together into one, turn them off and flee from it because it's evil and it's wicked. Because this church is headed toward a one world religion. You look for it, the church is he this, this world is headed for a, a one world religion, and the true church will not be a part of it. And the true church are those that have been born again by the grace of God. Number one, perilous times shall come. Number two, false Christ and false prophets will rise up in the world. Number three, the rise of Islam. I believe in the world today is a, a sign of Christ's coming. There are those that are, are listed. Many of, many of those things are listed in perilous times. Unnatural affection, unthankful, unholy. There is nothing holy or nothing godly about Islam. Now, I've heard much talk about that. I, I've listened to the news enough to hear, hear lately how that they, how that they're crying that the Islamic nation, that those that are, are, are peaceful Muslims, and I get in trouble probably, but it's all right, those that claim they're peaceful Muslims, that they should rise up against the, the uh, extremist, as it's called, the terrorist that they're called, that they are. And those uh, Islam terrorists that are involved, why don't the peaceful ones rise up against you? I'm going to tell you why they don't. Because they agree with them. 
That's why they don't rise up and, and call it what it is. That's why they don't rise up against it and try to show the world that they're not, a, that they're not part of that. They're a peaceful leader. They're not going to do it because they're a part of it. You say, well, a preacher, that don't make sense. Listen, if they all believe the same book, if they all believe the same Quran, then they all believe the same things. And you read, you can, uh, you can Google search and find the Quran, and you can read parts of it or all of it if you want to, but it's not for God. It's not for Christ. They don't worship the same God I do. Listen, all this mess going on in the world today is just a sign that Jesus is coming soon. A rise of an a Islamic state that's going to turn against Israel and turn all nations against Israel, friend, is what's coming. I used to, you know, I, it's not been so long ago that I thought, well, that can never happen here in America. Surely that can't happen in America. But after seeing what has gone on in the world with the way these people act, giving them the right weapons, they don't care. They would slaughter as millions of Americans to get their way. And they would enforce Sharia law in our land or else they would kill you if you didn't conform. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you. Look around, friend. We're living in the last days. Surely Jesus is coming. Will we face any of that before he comes? I don't know. But I'm telling you, we're living in perilous times. And we better get our heads out of the sand and pray. God, help us to be strong and to stand true to the Word of God. We've seen it on TV. We've watched the news how that many have been slaughtered for their faith. Because they named the name of Christ, whether they were right or not in their beliefs, I don't know. But they did name the name of Christ. They would not reject knowing Christ, and they've had their heads cut off. And the, and the waves of the sea were turned to look like blood. I'm telling you, it's a wicked, evil, I don't even call it religion, but for better use of words, religion. It's an evil, wicked movement that's taking over this planet a little by little. And friend, nobody seems to do anything to want to stop that. More like it's being encouraged than it is deterred. We're living in the last days. So we see this, I believe, as being part of living in the last days is this, is this is, is Islamic <coughs> terrorism that is going on in the world today. Perilous times shall come. We see that Islam is a wicked religion full of oppression, full of barbaric actions. Listen, we've been talking about sexual sins in Sunday school. And man, these people and their beliefs in what they do is as evil and vile and wicked in that nature as you can get. Do some studying. Do your own research. And you look at what they're allowed to do. And you look what it, what, what's a, allowed to happen. Anything that promotes Islam, anything that promotes Allah, is all fine and well with this book. They're full of killing of innocent people without regard to human life. They don't care. I watched them. I don't know how many of you have watched any of the videos, if you have, of those that they have killed, those that they have, they have murdered. But it's very, it's very unsettling what they do. And I wonder how can any human do that to another human and not feel any remorse? It's because they're full of the devil. It's because they're full of the devil. They don't care. Their conscience has been seared, and they have no conscience. Friends, we're living in the last days. Wake up. Wake up. If you've got somebody in your family that's lost, try to get them to God because Jesus is coming soon. And I'll tell you, God, listen, if you've got all against one of your brothers or sisters in Christ, you better get that right too because you're going to need your brothers and sisters in Christ. I need you. I'm your pastor, but I want you to know I need every one of you. I need every one of you. I need every one of you 
to, that I can love and that can love me and you need everyone that can love and love you and pray for you. The church needs one another and without each other, friend, we're, we get very weak, but we need each other. We need to band together stronger than ever before as a church. Not as a mass so not as a, a mass multitude of people, but as this born-again body of believers this morning, we need to band together as tightly as we can so that we can lean on each other as we lean on the Lord. Amen. Why? Because Jesus is coming soon. Number four, we see that we're living in a world of famine. That's something that's going to be prevalent in the last days is famine and all over the world today people are starving to death we're not starving to death here in America no we're not but how long is that going to last the recent droughts in California have have done some devastation upon the food crops will they recover or not I don't know price of groceries go up I don't know but that drought in California can have severe impact upon our food situation. And not only us, but around the world because America supplies a vast amount of food to the rest of the world. And oh, my friend, today, many people are starving to death and have not a morsel to eat. And we'll sit down at the table and we'll eat to our, to our full. And we'll scoot back, and if we're not careful, we'll never thank God for that meal that we just had. How many of you have ever been really hungry? I mean really hungry. By what I figured. Now, we've had hunger. We've had hunger pains where we, we thought we weren't going to make it. Starved to death by supper time, and we just eat at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. We're starved to death, but we ain't hungry. We've just got, we've just got an appetite. But you go four or five days without food and you begin to get hungry. So your body is made to, to, uh, to go a long time off of the fat that it's stored up. I live a little longer than most of you, amen. I've got a little more stored up. But friend, you, when you get hungry and when you start getting hungry, uh, then your, then your uh, body consumes the fat and then it becomes to consume itself. And people die of starvation, and that's why they're no bigger than nothing. They've used every bit of energy they had in their cells and their bodies. There's famine all over the world today. Children and men and women starving to death because they don't have good food. They don't have any food. A handful of rice would suffice them for a day if they just had the handful of rice. What does that mean, preacher? It means Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. It's a sign of the end days. Number five, earthquakes in diverse places. And I had some statistics, but I didn't write them all down. You'll just have to look that up too. About the thousands of earthquakes that occur annually around the world. Earthquakes in diverse places. It may not be big ones. But listen, if you notice that in the last couple of years, we've had more around this area than we've ever known before. Some little tremors, some, you know, some big tremors. But we've had, even around here, we've had more. We sat on a fault line. We've had more than 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 we normally have because it's a, it's a sign of the end of the t of when Jesus is coming. And it's look and see. Number six, another sign of the coming of the Lord. We just mentioned it a minute ago. Partially, people are being killed for their faith. People are being beheaded for the cause of Christ. Be, people are being persecuted for their faith and, and their, their, because of they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim that, then they're being persecuted and beheaded and, and beaten, tortured, because they will not renounce the name of the Lord. Friend, if it comes to you, will you have enough faith to say, I, I will not recant my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ? And you only will have that kind of faith and that kind of will and that kind of desire about you if you know God and if you have the grace of God in your life. But when it comes that time, I believe God will give you the grace to say, I will not recant the name of the Lord Jesus. Will it ever come to us? And many people said and say, no, preacher, that will never happen in our day. Don't be so sure. 
Preacher, we live in America, the freest land on earth. Listen, that's been taken away quickly. And listen, I'm telling you, if it come here, let's don't be lulled into thinking that it can never happen to us in America because it can. There's all kinds of conspiracy theories out there, and I'm not going to get into none of those this morning, but I'm telling you, America's headed for a disaster of, of proportions that we've never known before if we don't do something and get right with God. Oh, my friend, today, I love the Lord, I love the church, I love the things of God. God helped me to stand true to those principles and those things that I believe so that when the end is upon us, friend, we can go out faithfully serving the Lord. Amen? Those days of famine, those days of earthquakes, those days of people being killed for their faith. Number seven, we live in the most sinful society. A sign of the coming of the Lord is a sinful society. And we live in the most sinful society, I believe, that's been known to man. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. What was the days of Noah? They, they was, uh, there was sin that abounded everywhere. They were... Uh, 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 living together, uh, homosexuality was, you know, was very much a, a, a part of that society. Adultery, fornication, just what we've been studying in Sunday school, all those things are part of the days of Noah, and it is even now, today, most prevalent. <coughs> the sin of homosexuality is running rampant in our society. And it's being accepted more and more by the church and by God's people than ever before. I cannot accept that because it's entirely and totally against the Word of God. I cannot accept that. One of the most vulgar and gross sins that I can think of is that sin of homosexuality. I cannot imagine. I cannot fathom how that people can indulge in such wickedness and not feel no remorse. Listen, I say it every day, every day. Not a day goes by that I am not bombarded with that type of, yeah, and I work in the public and I work in Black Mountain and every day I see it over and over again. If you want to know more about that, I'll tell you privately, but I see it every day and it sickens me. It sickens me to know. And, to, and I had one tell me, I had one tell me, well, you might as well go get in a cave somewhere. I said, I see it, but I don't like it. I don't have to deal with it. You say, do they have a soul? Most certainly they do. Do they have, a, do they have an opportunity to get right with God? If they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they too can be saved. But see, they've been, men and women have been raised to see no wrong in it, and therefore they know no wrong in it. And when God's people don't reject it, then they go on believing that it's all right. But I, as your pastor, let it be known on record today that I object the sin of homosexuality and I will not, I will not ever accept that or any other sin by the help of God and by the grace of God. Young folks, listen to me today. If you, have, if you think that if, if anyone ever tells you they were born that way, that's wrong. They're not born that way, not at all. They are led by Satan into that evil and wicked and vile lifestyle, and but they too can get help if they'll turn to the Lord. Of those sins of immorality and those sins of a sinful society that we're living in today, we're living in that day where sexual perversion and where sexuality has been, you know, has been come to be a common thing. And people are having sex outside of marriage. People are having adulterous affairs. And there's nothing seems to be wrong with it. There, listen, there's people that say, I've got an open marriage. And my wife sleeps with who she wants to. I sleep with who I want to. And it only increases our, and may, makes our marriage better. Hogwash. Preacher, that's awful. Somebody needs to tell you. Amen. Somebody needs to tell you youngins that you stay away from sexual impurity in your life if you want to have a happy marriage. If you want to have a happy life and you want to enjoy the things of God, amen, don't do those things that you know is wrong to do. And may I name them for you if I have to. Boys, keep your hands where they belong. 
And girls, if the boys try to do anything different, knock them out. I told you that last Sunday, knock them out. You've got my permission. And daddies, if you have to interfere, just don't kill them, okay? I'm telling you, we're living in a day where young people are not told that having sex outside of marriage is wrong, but it's wrong. It's wrong in the Word of God. It's always been wrong. In 2015, it has not changed a bit. It's still wrong and it's still evil. And you know what I hear from teenagers? Well, everybody else does it. And guess what? If everybody else jumping off a bridge, you're going to do it too? You've heard that before too, haven't you? Just because everybody does it does not make it right. This sinful society that we're living in, that seems to be one of the most prevalent things that, that America is dealing with right now, that homosexuality, and it's all, it's, most of it is involved, you know, and along comes the drugs, along comes the alcohol. Nobody sees anything wrong with that today either. We're living in a sinful society. Only thing, only hope you have is... That which you have in the Lord. By God's grace, every teenager, every young person, by the grace of God, can stay by the stuff, stay with the Lord, and stay clean and stay pure. Every adult in this building, I know, it's, I know you're bombarded with all kinds of evil, all kinds of wickedness. But I'm telling you today that everybody in this building can abstain from wickedness and evil if you'll stay with God. Peer pressure, amen, I know it's bad, but you stay with the Lord. You see, I can tell you all this as your pastor because that I have, that I have suffered through some things that I know wasn't in the plan of God, wasn't in the will of God. But I want to tell you something, friend. I know that you and I today need to rely upon the help of the Holy Spirit of God to let us live holy, godly, in Christ Jesus as we walk in this world. That is, a, that is another sign of the coming of the Lord, the sinful society that we're living in. I'm going to go right quickly through the rest of these. We're, see, we're living not only in a sinful society, but an unthankful society. Nobody is grateful for the things they have, grumble all the time about what they don't have, and they've got more than most people in the world today right here in America. The homeless man on the street is better off. In most cases, the homeless man on the street, except when it's real cold like it's been, is better off than most people around this world. They're better than most homeless people in other societies. I know that. I've seen them. I've seen homeless people in third world countries, and they're far where they can't go and beg because there's so many of them. They're totally relying on what they can do for themselves. At least homeless people can stand out on the side of the road and somebody give them a biscuit. Somebody buy them a sandwich. But in other countries, they, they can't even do that. Starve to death without a home, without a roof in the weather and the cold. An unthankful society. We're living in a society where people are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. There's all kinds of entertainment out there to that, that will give you fleshly pleasure for a little while. All kinds of things. That's what the Bible says. That we live in a, in a day where there are people who are lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. We're living in a day, number 10, I'm on number 10 now if you're taking notes, that where there is a sign of the coming of the Lord is an increase in knowledge. Have you ever known a smarter society of people that are, that are brain smarts? Many of them dumb as a box of rocks when it comes to common sense, but the, but the head smarts are, are there. They're, trying to, they're, try, they're taking up, they're, they're taking names and, and uh, people that are going to volunteer to go to Mars. Have you all heard that? They're going to go to Mars. And it's a suicide one-way trip that those that want to go, if they're selected, and it's cost, cost millions of dollars, uh, probably our government support is somewhere there. They ain't figured that one out yet. But they're, they're asking people if they want to go, they can go to Mars on a one-way trip to Mars. For what reason? Who in the world wants to go to Mars? 
Evidently, there's people that do. You know how they're do They're smart. We're living in a day of intelligence as far as science goes and those things. People with a, with a knowledge but have no knowledge of God. For him, one of these days, if, you know, in eternity, if I want to go to Mars, amen, I believe, Lord, I want to go to Mars and I'll be right there and I'll see maybe the bones of them laying there that didn't make it back. We're living in a smart society. We're living in an educated society where increase of knowledge and, and people can figure out how to do anything that they want to do. Electronically, you know, anything they want, anything can be done. We can drop bombs. We can drop bombs that can, that can I'll tell you Hunter something here in a minute. We drop bombs that can, that can hit a, an outhouse, you know, from 30,000 feet. Miles away, they can hit that, hit that out. Boy, that's smart, ain't that's intelligent. That's good weaponry. Hunters, they've developed a bullet. I'll never be able to afford one. But you can shoot at a target a thousand, a thousand yards away, and it will, on its way to that target, if that target moves, it will adjust itself to hit that target. I gotta have me one of them. I'd never miss another deer. But listen, it's just intelligence, it's just smart, it's just wisdom, and men are gaining wisdom and wisdom, and don't know God, and that's a dangerous thing. And last of all, one of the times, one of the signs of the coming of the Lord is the, the listen to this, now this is, this has got me really thinking, and I, I'm, I'm, this is really interesting. We now have technology to enforce the mark of the beast. Have you noticed over the past 20 years how, how much that we're coming, becoming a cashless society? Most people in here have a debit card. You may have a few dollars cash on you, or you may still be one of those that's holding out to the end and carrying your cash. I admire you for that because when it comes down to it, that's the only thing that's going to, going to be able to help. But let me tell you something. We're now at the stage where every bit of your financial information can be held on the tip of a pen. Your bank account, your, everything about your, your history, a grain of, a smaller than a grain of rice, can be held on a little microchip. One company down in Florida has, and I don't know if they've made it mandatory or it's voluntary, where they have one of those chips implanted in them so that they don't have to show any ID when they go in and out of their building anymore. Where they can go to the cafeteria and eat without ever having to show their debit card anymore. They just scan their wrist. We're there. That's scary, but we're there. We're there where the mark of the beast can be enforced and technologically it can be it can happen right now. And friends, you know what happens when when the when the Antichrist sets up on this earth. Nobody be able to sit by ourselves without the mark of the beast. I've been asked the question, what if it comes to me that, that, that I take that, I won't be here. I won't have to answer that question. I won't be here. My friend today, I believe that Jesus is coming. I believe he's coming soon. I believe the Antichrist is ready to set up and, and to take over and they'll, Antichrist will, will sign a a, uh, a a league with Israel and, and everything's going to be good for a while and then all hell's going to break loose literally on this earth. And I don't say that derogatory. It's exactly because hell will, will release the demons of this earth upon this earth. And friend, it is going to be t hell on this earth during the last part of the tribulation. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Should he come today? Are you ready if he steps out before I get through preaching and says, come up hither, will you hear his call and will you go out to be with him? You say, yeah, preacher, I'll be ready to go. I'm ready to go. Everything right between you and the Lord. God help me. To me, staying right to, to be ready to meet the Lord is a continuous effort upon my part to stay close to the Lord. I'm saved. I'm going out here. When the rapture takes place, no doubt I'm going out here to be with him. But every day I must say, God, keep me close to you that I might be right with you when I meet you in the air. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. I pray, God, you'd help us. Lord, we've tried our best to get across a message to folks. So let them, 
understand the urgency of the hour. God, you're coming, and you're coming quickly. And God, help us, Lord, to be right with you, Lord, when you come. Should there be someone under the sound of our voice today, God that's lost, that's not ready to meet you, may God, may this day, God, may this very day, they come under conviction of the Holy Ghost of God and get right with you and be saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Every head bowed, no one. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. I want to ask you this morning, are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to meet God? Do you realize that He could come before this day's out? When you leave this building this morning, are you going to go about your everyday business without thought of Christ, the coming of Christ? Or are you going to realize Jesus may come at any moment? God, help us to be faithful. And I know as long as we're here, we're going to have to continue on with our lives. But we must do it in the light of his coming. I want to first someone here this morning say, Preacher, I've never been saved. And if Jesus comes back, I'm not going, I'm not going to go with the believers. But I'll be left behind. I want to first one raise your hand. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not saved. I'm lost without God. Is there one? I want to first a believer here this morning say, Preacher, I know if the rapture takes place. If Jesus comes back, I'm going to go to be with him. But I want to be living close to him when he comes. And I want to be faithful to him when he comes. I want if you to slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. All over the building. Folks, I don't know how to get it across to you any better. We're living in that last day. Maybe he'll come today. Maybe he'll come today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for these.